Hi, my name is David Donnelly. I'm the Research Officer at the Dolphin Research Institute and I'm here to talk to you about how to spot whales. Spotting whales is a very challenging task and requires patience and a good pair of eyes and perhaps a bit of company. So why don't we get started? Spot a whale, how to, where to and when to. So our topics for today will be about our equipment or our gear that we're going to use also the site selection or the location you choose to look for whales from, the platform on which you'd like to stand, the telltale signs of whales being in the area, some secret facts there, the species identification so you know what you're looking at, and then of course we want to hear about what you see, so how to report those sightings. So let's move on. By the way, the photos you're seeing in this presentation are mostly taken around the Two Bays region. This particular photo was taken just off Long Thaggy. Uh, during our research efforts in Bass Strait. First topic, what do you need? They're all important. There's quite a list of things you need to take and there's a few things you probably should take. So let's start with warm clothes. As you can see in the image below on the left, those people are overdoing it a little bit for the area we work in, but it's not unreasonable to throw a few extra clothes on. Make sure that you do bring warm clothes and stay warm during your observation efforts. Binoculars are a real advantage if you're looking for whales, particularly if they're a bit further out from the sea, out from the land. I like to use 7x50 binoculars, but any sort of binoculars are fine, provided they're tuned to your eyes. And the way to do that is to tune on the right hand eyepiece. You can twist it around to suit your eyes. Everybody's eyes are different. I'm a plus 1.5 and adjust to make it just perfect for you. It's also useful to have a camera. And if you're interested in taking great photos or good photos, about a 300 millimeter lens is very, very useful. It'll reach out to where the whales are in most cases and give you a fairly crisp and clear photograph, provided you have hold the camera steady. The, the camera you see down in the bottom right hand corner is a 400 uh, mil, 100 to 400 mil Canon camera lens. It's a very good cam camera lens. It will reach out to several kilometers. Uh, it is carryable, in, in other words, it's not too heavy. But if you're feeling a bit fitter uh, and you'd like those real distant photos to be a little bit sharper, try the 600 mil lens. An ID guide is very useful and you can see one up in the top right hand corner of the presentation. ID guides help you understand what you're looking at. We'll go through some species identification shortly, but these gatefold waterproof uh, put in your back pocket type guides are very helpful when you're out at sea or when you're on the land looking out to sea. And of course, you don't want to go hungry, so make sure you take some snacks. Site selection is really important. As you can see here at Pyramid Rock, it's a very popular location. This is during one of our activities at the Island Whale Festival, spotter whale activities, which were very, very crowded uh, and difficult to manage at times. But it allowed people to see and see whales and also be with people who know how to look for whales. So what should your site be like? What's the best way to select the site? We need to consider things like, obviously, it needs to be on the coast. It needs to be elevated. That means it's high ground and looking out to sea, just to gain a little bit further vision out into the horizon. We also want to be southward facing in our area. That's the Two Bays region. Most of the might with the whales you see along our coast are humpback whales, and they're almost always traveling from east to west during winter. So if you're looking south, you'll see the animals coming in from the right, be able to track them right past your vantage point, and as, as they move up to the west, you'll be able to follow them until another pipe comes by. Ease of access is something people don't think about very often. Uh, ease of access means being able to get to the site fairly easily. Now, one of the things you should look for once you're at the site is a bit of protection, because we, our whale season is in winter. So we need to be protected from the wind so we can stay out just a little bit longer and not get too cold while we're out there. And finally, we preferably need to be near amenities. Uh, some people are very passionate about whale watching and they'll sit out there for hours at a time. So having some amenities close by uh, is a very helpful thing. I like to go to Cape Shank as my elevated uh, location. It gives me great vision out to the south, east and west. Uh, it has great amenities, even has a coffee van and it also has protection from the weather and a seat to sit at. Uh, if you look over Cape Shank, there's several places you can go to. I prefer the one up on the right behind the lighthouse keeper's cottages. And you can see whales. If you haven't already spotted it, there it is there. A humpback whale doing a head lunge as it passes Cape Shank. 
Another one of my favourite places to go to is Pyramid Rock on Phillip Island. Pyramid Rock is a beautiful location and reaches far out into the ocean compared to the rest of the island. So the whales have to pass by relatively closely so they're not coming into the bays. This particular site has some amenity, relatively easy to access and is very picturesque. And if you haven't seen it already, again, there it is, the Southern Right Whale passing by from, going from the east to the west. Some other locations you might be interested in, in exploring in the Two Bays region are Barwon Bluff in the west, Point Lonsdale also on the west side of the rip, Port Sea Surf Lifesaving Club. If you're inside Port Phillip Bay, snap a point at Mornington's not a bad spot. Cape Shank and anywhere along the Mornington Peninsula, the Nobby Centre on Phillip Island, Pyramid Rock, Cape Woolamai and Anzacs, and Punchbowl and Eagle's Nest and the Boonarong Coast or the Bass Coast. Really, all we really, really need to remember here is that you need to be elevated and looking out to sea. They're the two key points. So what do you look for? The telltale signs of whales. There's many things you can think about when you're looking for whales, but really the whales are gonna tell you where they are if in fact you have good enough eyes. So I'm gonna try and help you understand what to look for here. We're all familiar with the blow. You can see the blow in the top left-hand corner here. This is the blow of a blue whale. Quite prominent, very, very tall and quite white. Uh, humpback whales are less tall, not quite as, uh, as dense, and about half the height, about five metres. Southern right whales have a characteristic V-shaped blow, which we'll talk about later. Other telltale signs are parts of their body sticking out of the water. So the top right-hand corner, you can see the pectoral fin of a southern right whale. They may be just brief glimpses, so thinking it might be a bird banking or a dolphin splashing or something similar, have a second look, just in case it is part of a whale protruding out of the water. Sometimes all we see is a splash. Maybe we only see it once. The bottom left-hand corner is a classic example of that. And one of the less conspicuous but equally important things to look for on the water surface are footprints. That is an area where the whale has been as a result of its tail pushing up towards the surface and displacing water, leaving a flat, oily, tight circle. If you can't see them in that bottom right-hand corner, there they are right there. You can just see a bit of flat water in amongst the rippling water. As I said, very discreet, but worth keeping an eye open for. So let's go and see who's who in Bass Strait in the Two Bays region. We've got four species sitting here, but that's because it's nice and neat to put it onto a slide. We're not going to cover the, the dwarf minke whale, which is in the top left-hand corner, but we will cover the other three, the killer whale, the southern right whale, and the humpback whale. For your information, dwarf minke whales are fairly infrequent in our area, but they are sighted. They're quite small and they are very, very beautiful. They don't have much of a blow, and when they do raise uh, their, their bodies to the surface to breathe, they always come up rostrum first. Interesting, that is the point of their jaw or their, their, their what would be their beak if they were a dolphin. Okay, let's move on. First species, southern right whales. One of my favorites. Beautiful looking animals, quite unusual, and very, very hard to find in our coastal waters unless you go to the nursery areas. There's only about 300 of them left in our subpopulation here in the southeast. Of, of Australia. So how do we tell if it's a southern right whale? The first thing we look for is does it have a dorsal fin or not? In the case of the southern right whale, the answer is no. So that's almost all you need to know, but you need to see that part of the animal to be sure. So we need a few other identifying features to confirm the species. Let's have a look. Callosities, the white crusty bits on top of the head, along the jaw and around the eye of the southern right whale very prominent, very easy to see. They pick up the light really, really well. And that is characteristic of the species. They also have square shaped flippers or pectoral fins, which we saw in the photo earlier. No other species in our area has similar dorsal, uh, similar, similar pectoral fins. So if you see that protruding from the water, you know that it's a southern right whale. The other things to look for, and very hard to look for, is the discrete nature of these animals at the surface. They're very low profile. Not much of the body protrudes out of the water as they surface, and they often log around, making just the, the most subtle of differences in the way you look at the water. Just a dark strip on the water is often something you should investigate, because it, it could be a southern right whale. And as it rolls over, it doesn't show much of its body. So you've got to be right on your game to find a southern right whale. Here's a few examples of what southern right whales look like when we look at them from the land. This is a cow and a calf. Just, in the surf, just behind the surf break at Logan's Beach, Warrnambool. You can see the low profile and the way they're sitting there. And you can also see the white crusty sections around their head, their lips, and top of the head. 
There's those square pectoral fins we talked about earlier. You can see a cow and a calf sitting together, uh, protruding those pectoral fins above the water's surface. This photo was taken by my colleague Chris Farrell uh, in the west coast of Victoria. And of course, the characteristic V-shaped blow that we mentioned earlier. Of course, this photo was taken by, from a vessel looking back towards Cape Woolamite. No other whale in our area has a, a consistent blow which has a V-shape. The next most uh, common species, or the most common species of large whales that is to come through our waters here in the Two Bays region is the humpback whale. The humpback whale is vastly different in appearance to the southern right whale, and the first thing you notice is it has a dorsal fin, whereas the southern right whale, again, does not. If we look at the ventral side of the animal, it's often white, but this is only occurring in the southern hemisphere. In the northern hemisphere, the, same, the reverse is true. I'm not saying there's only white-bellied ones, there are some black-bellied ones, but they're mostly white-bellied here in the south southern hemisphere. They have very long pectoral fins, these are very obvious when they raise them from the water, about a third of the body length, which is about five meters in length for an adult whale. And when they arch over for their what we call the terminal dive, before that fluke comes up out of the water, you'll see that lovely hump, which is given the, which was the reason this animal is called the humpback whale. You can see the dorsal fin protrude before that tail comes up. So here's a few examples of, of humpback whales as we would see them at sea and from the land. This photo was taken by our friends at Wildlife Coast Cruises, showing that characteristic hump just before the animal rolls over on its terminal dive. And if you look really closely, you might be able to see where some of you people may be sitting during the Island Black Hell Festival, right about there. Here's two other characteristic features of the humpback whale, those extra long pectoral fins up to a third of the body length. And there is the tail or the fluke of the animal. Now this may look like a contortionist, but it's actually two whales. One uh, raising the right side of its body, the other right way up and showing the dorsal side of its flute. Moving on to my favorite species of all, the killer whale. Killer whales are actually dolphins. That's the first thing we need to understand here. Killer whales are very easily recognized by most people. So we won't spend too much time on them other than to show you this photo. This photo was taken by my colleague, Glenn Sharp at the Department of Environment, Land, Water and Planning off Torquay. Now you can see the extra large dorsal fin on this uh, male. Only the males have that very tall dorsal fin, which reaches to about 1.8 meters in height. But if it is a female, it's going to have a much smaller dorsal fin and much more curved in shape. One characteristic you can look for is the gray saddle or the gray markings right behind the dorsal fin, which sets off against the black of the rest of the body. One more photo of the killer whales as they pass by Pyramid Rock, taken by my friend Renee Devant from Wildlife Coast Cruises. So, now that you know how to see whales and you know your species identification because you've paid attention today, you of course want to know how to report your sightings. So how do we do this? Sighting reports are very, very important in understanding how our whales move around our coastline, what the numbers are like, and how we can use that information for conservation and management. Well, we've got a system called Podwatch. Podwatch is a web-based application. It doesn't require a login system. It's a very simple link on the Dolphin Research Institute website. All you need to do is to go to Podwatch and follow the prompt. And the prompts are as simple as this. Just choose the animal you think you've seen and follow the rest of the prompts until you come to the button which says submit. That information then comes to us and we can process it, make sense of it, and make sure that the right people hear about these animals and how we might need to be able to protect them in the future. I'd like to thank you today for, uh, for joining us. Uh, I know it's a different way of looking at presentations during these times. Um, for, for all of us, it's, uh, we wish we could spend more time face to face. Perhaps in 2022, we'll be doing that. Thank you very much for your time. I hope we've been informative and helpful in good luck in spotting whales.